Good afternoon, everybody. I've come here today to tell you why, why I think music makes us human. I was thinking of maybe doing the shortest ever TEDx talk today, because timing is really important when it comes to TEDx. So my initial talk was simply going to be, music makes us human because I've never heard of an elephant listening to Bob Marley. <laughs> I decided I might have to do the longer option, simply because I wasn't convinced I would get a free ticket for the rest of the event. <laughs> Back in September 2008, I'd just arrived in Austin in Texas, a city full of live music. Myself and my wife went for a meal, and on our way back to our hotel, we passed Nuno's Blues Bar on 6th Street. The bouncers on the door of Nuno's tried to entice us inside, and I said to them, don't worry guys, we're going to come back tomorrow. And then he said four words that are forever stuck in my mind. Pine Top Perkins is inside. Now at this point, it's probably important for me to explain who Pine Top Perkins is. At that time, he was a 95-year-old blues legend. He was a great, great piano player. And for many years, he played in the Muddy Waters Blues Band. Now, if you've never heard of Muddy Waters, if they were to do a Mount Rushmore of American music, Muddy's face would be on the side. We went inside the club, and there was a small circular table. And on that table, in terrible handwriting, it said, if Pine Top Perkins is in tonight, please don't sit here. Well, I looked for him and looked for him. At first, he was known, but nowhere to be seen. Then suddenly, he, he appeared. I quickly darted over to him and bought one of his CDs for $20. Within the next few minutes, Pine Top, a man into his head, a man who survived on cheeseburgers, apple pie and cigarettes, was up on stage playing the blues. It was just an unbelievable moment for me. After just two hours of arriving, I'd encountered a legendary blues, blues man. Why am I telling you this today? Well, it's quite simply because thanks to music, I've had thousands of these moments. Thousands and thousands of moments when I felt truly alive. I'm fortunate that I get to make my living out of music these days. I'm a guitar tutor, and over the past several years, I've taught thousands upon thousands of guitar lessons right here in the Isle of Man. I've worked with children's nurseries, so toddlers. I've worked with people who are well past retirement age. I've worked with prisoners. I've worked with people who have experienced some mental health problems. And I've worked with people with autism. But the great, great thing about music is, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what condition you may or may not have. It doesn't matter whether you're employed or not, whether you're male or female. It doesn't matter what religion you are or what sexuality you are. Music is for everyone. And I mean everyone. If you're the sort of person who feels that you can't learn to play an instrument, or sing in tune. I'm here to tell you that, yes, you can. It might take a lot of practice, but you can do it. Anyone can do it. The great musicians and singers have spent years and years and decades and decades perfecting their craft. But everyone can get started in music. And that is probably because we all have a pulse running through us and we all have a heartbeat, our internal drummer. Music is an incredible, invisible force that unites us in a way that very few other things can. We're willing to travel hundreds of miles to go and stand in a muddy field to listen to our favourite bands. The greatest cities in the world have built the most fantastic buildings just so we can go inside and listen to music. Music written centuries ago can still stir our soul. And the thought of brand new music whips friends, uh, fans into a frenzy and they count down the seconds until concert tickets go on sale. We have music in schools. We have music in our places of work, our places of worship. We have them use music for every social occasion. 
We will hear it at political rallies, at funerals. We dance to it, we clap to it, we march to it. We hear music before we are even born, or we certainly feel music, which is the key aspect. A few years ago now, when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, we went to a very loud rock concert. The baby moved like it had never, never moved before. In fact, we were so concerned we had to leave the venue and the baby calmed down again. So even an unborn child was picking up, at the very least, the vibrations of music. When we are actually born, we must hear music within minutes, if not a couple of hours of being born. And straight away we relate to it. One of the great things about my work is, as I mentioned earlier, I go into some nurseries and I sing nursery rhymes with the children. Just last week, I was in one of the nurseries and there was a little girl there that I'd never seen before who was 15 months old. The second I started playing the guitar, that girl started dancing. And then afterwards, at the end of the session, I always let the children strum the guitar. That girl would not stop strumming the guitar. We had to force her away. And that just proves that that's within us. And I do feel that as we get older, perhaps, we start becoming more conscious of it and we start saying to people, oh, you're not a very good singer, or you can't dance. Oh, you're not very good at that. And that sort of inner confidence we have as children gets taken out of us. Well, I'm here to say that you can get that inner confidence back. And if you love music, you can play music. Often, music is just there to enhance something else. For example, the world of films. Jaws wouldn't be very scary without the music. It would be a bit of plastic in the sea. Star Wars wouldn't be the same, Superman wouldn't be the same, Indiana Jones wouldn't be the same, Psycho wouldn't be the same. I believe music is exceptionally valuable, in fact I would argue it's completely priceless. But it's somewhat ironic that most people these days don't even pay for music, they believe it's got no monetary value whatsoever. We sometimes take it for granted like the air we breathe or the water we drink. But just like the air we breathe and the water we drink, music is a vital ingredient of life. The great thing about music is, if we really pay attention to it, if we really listen, if we're really in that moment, not only is it a basic ingredient, but it becomes the chocolate sprinkles, the whipped cream, or the hot chili sauce of life. It's the food that makes us feel good too. Music means a lot to different people. It can be anything you want it to be. It can be a sparkling city at night, bustling with electricity and energy. It can be a quiet cove on a picturesque remote island. It can be the bounce of a country lane. It could be the dust of a dirt road. It could be the crash of an ocean. It could be an arc of white light. It could be the memory of someone been and gone. There's a lot of mathematical patterns to music, but I want to illustrate really that the key thing to music is the sound. I'm just going to grab my guitar to show you. If I play an A chord, an A major chord. Now the good news is there's no one here today that's cringing when I play that. So that means it sounds pleasant to our ears. It's a happy sound. It's quite a plain sound. If I'm being critical, it's a little bit boring. If I change one note of that chord and it becomes an A minor chord, see what happens. Can we feel the difference there? If I played this chord for the rest of the day, no matter how good the TED Talks, the TEDx Talks were, you're not going to feel good. And you're probably thinking right now as I'm playing this chord, I wish you'd done the 15 second talk instead. <laughs> if I change chords again and I play what's known as an A7th chord, and again, 
ignore the fact it's the seventh chord. It, it sounds a little bit bluesy. It's not really major, it's not really minor. If I play it a bit slower, it sounds like there's a bit of a mystery there or a bit of suspense. It would be very to sort of hard to end a song like that. Now, often uh, musicians and um, music teachers in particular talk about scales. A scale is just a collection of notes that are put together. Scales really, in my mind, only apply when we're going to create music with them. Now, if I play this note here, and then I play this note, it sounds quite nice. And in musical terms, I'm playing the first note in a major scale, in the C major scale. And I'm also playing the eighth note in the scale, which is also becomes a C. But this is what happens when I play the first note in a scale, and I play the, the seventh note. It sounds pretty horrible, right? I think we could all pick up on that. So how do we, we already know this stuff. The fact that it's a C major scale is irrelevant. You know that sounds horrible, but when I play this note, everything is right with the world again. <laughs> so the fact that we're human means we're already an expert on music. Now we use music, as I say, for lots of different things and think about perhaps the time, times when you've been to the gym and it's helped you go that extra mile. I'm no expert on that. <laughs> Think about the times when you've listened to it, when perhaps you've lost someone close to you. Music is an invisible friend that is always at hand for us. For a while, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, I was a voluntary guitar tutor at a prison. The night before, well, the night before I used to go into the prison, I used to teach one of the very people responsible for putting prisoners in prison in the first place. And guess what? Whether I was with my student the night before or in prison the following morning, we were able to learn and play the same songs. Because music doesn't judge us. It doesn't care who you are or where you've been or where you're going to. It truly is for everyone. I think one of the greatest phrases in the English language is when we say we are lost in music. Because whether you're listening to an orchestra saw, or you're listening to your favourite song from a musical, or the distorted power chords of a punk rock classic, when you're in that moment, that truly exceptional moment, you are alive. Later on in the end of the second session, I will be playing some music with my good friend Tim Cass, also known as Papa Cass. We're both big fans of the country blues, and one of the great, great guitar players of the country blues was the late, great Big Bill Brunzi. Big Bill was on the radio in Chicago one time. I believe the host was a guy called Studs Terkel, who was a presenter. Bill, Big Bill played a song, and Studs said to him, Hey Bill, tell me, was that a folk song? And Big Bill replied, well, I ain't never heard no horse sing it. <laughs> so horses may not sing the blues, and elephants may not listen to great songwriters. But what I believe to be true is that music plays an essential part in our species. I believe music makes us human. Thanks very much.